Hello. Happy New Year's Eve. I am uh, getting ready for our nieces and nephews coming over tonight uh, for a sleepover for New Year's. So since I'm making this food anyways, I thought I would turn on the camera and just have you hang out with me if you care about what I got on the go today. So I'll just tell you like there's no plan here really I was just gonna cook and then I thought okay well I'll just get everything ready and turn on the camera and then I'll just blah 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 as I go. Okay so I'm just gonna fill you in on my plan. So our nephews are nine and ten years old and our nieces are seven and six years old. So we have a range from six years old to ten years old. And as many of you may know, uh, if they don't like the food you cook, they don't eat and then they want something all night long. So I have now figured out what foods they enjoy and I've figured out ways to inject some healthy things into it without them knowing because you can't call it healthy because they may not like it. Even though they eat healthy and you know their parents got that covered but when they come here I like them to feel like they're still getting that you know blast of junk and fun but yet meanwhile I'm sneaking things in and putting them out in an order that uh, minimizes the amount of junk they do eat so they are my little scientific experiment and my job as the aunt and the uncle over there is to make sure that they have fun and really if I can get some healthy stuff into them while they're here and keep them on a good flow and if everything's ready when they get here then all I have to do is play like wrestle nerf guns in the studio we paint we play hide and go seek we watch movies we do karaoke so I can't be doing this stuff while that's going on because I want to have fun I don't want to be a line order cook for the night even though I kind of am anyways between snacks and this and that and the other thing so I'll just tell you how I plan out the food for nights like this so when they come for a sleepover I now have the plan I used to try to I've been figuring it out over the years but now I've got like a solid loadout that seems to work so I just keep rolling that out and making it better every time I make it all right so let's get started <sighs> okay, and uh, Happy New Year's Eve. Oh yeah, and here is to a great 2019 filled with fun and health and all that good stuff. All combined into one. Whoops, my first beer and I'm already spilling it. Okay, well, cheers. Thanks for hanging out. <laughs> and I have my sous chef with me, just so you know. Brent Bechman Bechera. So this is my opportunity to boss him around without him complaining about it. <laughs> hey babe. Ah. Oh, he's laughing like, I can't believe you said that. <laughs> All right, so I prep breakfast as well as dinner this evening. So tomorrow morning, I need to have everything ready as well. So I have grapes. Soaking in water with about two tablespoons of vinegar. So any vegetable or fruit you want to wash, just put plain old vinegar in water with it and let them soak for about, I don't know, 15 minutes. And then after these are done and rinsed, I take them all off the stalks and put them in a bowl so that when the kids are up in the morning, I just stick that big bowl out there with them already taken off the branches. And then I also include these cute little, oh yeah, that's the thing. They love all the fun little utensils that go with it. So I put out about uh, four of those and then they just sit around like a little bonfire around the grapes and they just stab them and eat them because they love these. Meanwhile, they're getting grapes into themselves. And then they're not so jonesing for something for breakfast. And then that buys me a little more time just to drink my coffee and take my time. So these little things with a bowl of grapes in the morning. Uh, Fesh, I'll actually get you the... Sure, 
can you rinse those off? And then can you fill up the bowl again with uh, the same amount of water and vinegar? Sure. All right, so that's grapes happening. So as well, so when they first get here, they're so excited and they just go mad and we just wrestle and do like crazy stuff. My mother's coming too. She can't handle the wrestling as much and the uh, uh, evil can evil things that go on here. But I told her she's just going to have to bear with it because it's going to happen. And that's why they come here. So anyhow, so when they get here, I already have on the table in a fun, fancy bowl that my stepdaughter Tiffany gave us. It even came with these little salad serving thingies. I don't put these in because I actually stuff this with, thank you, broccoli and baby carrots. And they just sit there and they play in the living room and they uh, just eat these like madly. Whereas if I had chips and stuff like that out, they would just sit there and eat the chips. So I just shove these out and get the veggies in them right away when they're the hungriest. And then, see, I tricked them into eating good food. So they aren't even looking for chocolate or anything like that yet. Hello, Stefan in Quebec. All right, so these come already pre-washed. So I load them in and if you know what kids are like, I take the time to pull out all the weird looking carrots that I know they'll be like, ew, I don't like those carrots and then they won't eat any of them. So I even go through and take out the crappy ones so that they just keep eating. And because I don't have children myself, I am not used to the pace at which these children eat. So I have to make it easy for myself. <laughs> uh, okay, so I load it up with carrots. So I get everything done in advance, like even this in the bowl. Okay, so here we have again, water with about two tablespoons of vinegar. So I just put the broccoli tops in here. And when possible, I do buy organic, even though I know the kids don't care but getting good stuff into those little bodies that's that's my goal really without them knowing <laughs> all right so we'll let those soak uh also uh, after cutting off i don't leave the stalks on because they will not like it so i just chop these up and then uh, save them for tomorrow when the kids are gone and it's just me and Bash left and we will have an omelet with these broccoli stocks thrown in it already chopped and then we will be able to drink our coffee in silence and eat our omelet with the part of the broccoli that the kids will not enjoy anyways so in prepping for dinner then I also prep for the next day it's like when we have a party I will uh, <laughs> I'll make a dip for the night but then I'll also make like a little mini dip for the next evening after we've cleaned everything up and everybody's gone so uh, that we have a dip ready to go because as much as I like to socialize I don't like to work all that much so doing pre-work works for me oh yeah so I peeled the broccoli stalks by the way and apparently the healthiest part of the broccoli is in the stock so I never ever throw it away always eat it in something and even if you don't want to put it in uh, in your eggs or whatever the next day you could also put it in soup so got my container ready for it Scooper. Hold on. Bash? Yeah. Do you know where the scooper is? The scraper? Which, which one? The scoop? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm you, missing a major tool. Yeah. Okay. Chef scoop. 
Thanks. This, by the way, super handy. If you do not have one of these and you cook a lot, it's really fun. Obviously, you can pick up your cutting board and move it, but I like this. Uh, so, I just put the broccoli stalks into a container, into the fridge, never to be seen by the children. Just kidding, it's not that dire, but definitely not feeding those to them. Oh yeah, and I'm also gonna make macaroni and cheese. If I was making it for adults, I would probably chop this up finer and I would put this into the macaroni and cheese. But not tonight. Tonight is kid night. Okay, broccoli stocks ready to be eaten tomorrow by adults. Oh, and as well, like I said, I put the broccoli and the carrots into this boat. And for me and mom and Bash, I also buy snack peas and I have those cleaned and then uh, we eat those in the background. And if any child should want one of them, they can definitely have some of ours, but putting them in their bowl, it's a waste. So I'll just put those in with the, in with the broccoli stock, no, in broccoli heads. Da -da -da. Oh, and as well, I have to get all this done this afternoon early before they get here at like supper time because I have to have a nap. Before they come for a sleepover, we have a nap. It's for them. I swear. <laughs> and then after the nap, I'm like ready to go. I can wrestle with anybody then. <laughs> We wrestle and run a lot. Okay, and while we're doing this, like I said, we're gonna be making a macaroni and cheese injected with my magic new ingredient. It's, it's not mine, but I just started using it. Anyhow, I'm gonna boil the water for the pasta. Two pots going because I am going to do two things of this. I use uh, rice pasta and I cook it to al dente so that it soaks up all the juice that I put in with it for the mac and cheese and makes it more moist and delicious. Uh, so I use two of those. I do use macaroni looking, macaroni elbow looking pasta so that the kids recognize it and go, oh yeah, that's pasta, right? Or that's macaroni. If I use a different shape, they're like, hmm, that's not really macaroni and cheese. So I'm on to them. I'm a good aunt, let me tell you. <laughs> All right, so elbow macaroni going in the pots when it's ready. Um, the broccoli and the snap peas are soaking. I'd say that's probably good. Deshna, yeah, will you uh, rinse those, yeah, sure. please? Uh, what do we have to do? Maybe making our sauce for the macaroni and cheese, I think might be our next step. Yeah, what else do I have here? Oh, well, that's good. Okay, yeah, so we open up the evening with the veggies, the so carrots and broccoli and ranch dip. Oh, yeah, that's good. So I don't get too adventurous. Um, I bought this ranch organic veggie dip. Sometimes I will attempt to make my own, but it's not really worth it. So I just put this out with the veggies and they are off to the races. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, can you take out those grapes and put them into that glass bowl? I think it's over there. The big one in the middle drawer. Okay. So yeah, I put our ranch dressing with the veggie boat. Okay, broccoli 
and snap these all nice and clean. After being soaked for 15 minutes in water and vinegar, plain vinegar, nothing fancy. So I cut up the broccoli small enough so that they're not taking big huge chunks with like a poop ton of ranch dressing on it. <laughs> and because we eat it in the living room, I try to minimize the amount of splatter on the go. Anybody with any experience with children know how splattery they are. So just cut them up into good sizes. And I know they get so excited that they just start splashing stuff everywhere. Alright. So I'll cut up. Put those in the the, the boat which is my favorite serving dish by far. Um, so yeah, getting food into them early, the carrots and the broccoli, uh, seems to minimize the amount they want junk later. We've even made it through some sleepovers without even pulling out like popcorn or chips or chocolate or anything. Um, which is, to me, a aunt and uncle win. <laughs> and actually, we hardly have any chocolate here, Bash. There is none. Actually, we have no chocolate and no candy. Not on purpose, just the way it worked out. I think they cleaned us out last time. No, the time before. Alright, so, broccoli. And then I have all that ready, like I said, on the coffee table when they get here. And we also give them their very own, oh we have grapes ready for, I need you to take all those off. Oh, all of them? Yeah. Oh, I just cut the slate because sometimes I like to just grab a... No, we give them their little pokers. Oh, okay, very good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and like I said, snappies for the adults. Happy New Year, Carla. Um, uh, snap peas. Snap peas. More broccoli. More broccoli. So, me and mom and Besh will eat these. Kids can eat snap peas. Oh yeah, I already said that. But the chances of them loving these the most? Yeah, Not good. Yeah. Uh, will you um, will you put saran wrap on this yeah, when sure. you're ready? So then I will. Hold on, I gotta tell you, look, show you how cool it looks. And a veggie boat. Pretty fun, huh? Uh, with ranch dip. And I know they all like ranch, so I get ranch. Um, and you can throw those. Okay. Oh, one more. Broccoli. <sighs> okay, so we got our water boiling for the pasta over there. Like I said, for the mac and cheese, we're using rice pasta. Uh, now we're going to make the sauce for the mac and cheese and I will show you the latest discovery that has made me very happy feeding the nieces and the nephews, especially mac and cheese, which really when you look at macaroni and cheese, there is nothing to it but macaroni and cheese. Uh, if I was making this for adults, which I would now, especially since I have my new secret ingredient, which is butternut squash, which when blended into your macaroni and cheese, looks like cheese. Kids don't even know it's in there. So, this is my magic ingredient. 
and I tried it for the first time when they were here for a sleepover last time and Drew the oldest said that I was in the top three best macaroni and cheeses he's ever had and he's had a lot let me tell you the kid loves macaroni and cheese and the only people that beat me were his two grandmothers so I'll take that any day ah great ready to go and just to recap so we put out the grapes in the morning when they're up early and we give them these little sticks which normally I will even like mark with tape so that they're not all switching it up. I don't know, who's this this? And then they eat them with this. So they just sit around and munch away with little fun things. <clears throat> all right, for mac and cheese I start with our Nutribullet. Let me get a blade. So I find the Nutribullet is the best way to get it all mixed up nice and fast. So I use the big cup and the blade that'll go on it. Um, I use two tins of coconut milk. Let's move down this way a bit. Two tins of coconut milk. You could use, like, I guess, regular milk if you wanted. Oh, shit. Let me tell you that opening a can of coconut milk, it happens every time, but for some reason, I don't seem to quite get with the program fast enough. So there'd be like a layer of like coconutty stuff on the top, but underneath this is like pure coconut water. So if you start pouring and then all of a sudden this plops out, then all the juice runs out after it and like covers all your shit. Okay, here we go. So it's best if you can puncture a hole in it first. And at first I thought maybe the coconut was gone bad from all the stuff on the top and then the liquid on the... Oh, shit again. Anyhow, it's pain in the butt. In a funnel? <laughs> Uh, just a cloth, I think. Thanks. Oh, oh my god. Yeah, thanks. Is that the second cat? Yes. It's not supposed to be. <laughs> Anyhow, this is not the greatest demo for coconut milk. Oh yeah, and I'm only supposed to put one can in at a time, so I'm still... Not, not making this happen in the way I would like it to happen. Oh well, it's, mm -hmm. it's not heart surgery, so whatever. Mm -hmm. Thanks. All right, and because coconut milk comes kind of separated, I like to whip it up in the Nutribullet. And my apologies in advance for all the noise. The only drawback to a Nutribullet is how freaking noisy it is. Sometimes I even plug my ears because, oh my god, I got like stuff everywhere. Oh my god. That did not go well. Right. <laughs> Next time we pre-pour the coconut. <laughs> I don't know, I think this is a good demo to show if you've never opened coconut milk. <laughs> this is how not to do it. <laughs> And I've been opening coconut milk for years, yet still, here we are. Wow. Oh yeah, and by the way, this will be like super sticky because it's kind of a sweet milk. Alright. water's boiling. Can you set the timer for, actually here, can you put these in and mix them in? So we're going to put our rice pasta in the boiling water. With. Oh, oh already oh. Okay. they're already open. <laughs> yeah. Wow, yeah, okay, good, only one though. Okay, we have some on the floor. We can recover. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's good, the only one burner is ready. 
you put salt in oil yet? Yeah, I put salt in there. Any oil yet? No, I don't think we need oil. I don't normally put it in. Yeah, it helps not stick. You may want to wait till that one's boiling. I don't sure. know. It's probably pretty soon. Well, we'll be done with that. Yeah, right. Can you put the timer on for like that? So the rice pasta uh, takes. Here, I'll show you the front of it. The rice pasta takes, where's English? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Oh yeah, seven to 10 minutes. So I cook it more towards the seven minute part and keep it kind of al dente, which will soak up all this sauce that we're gonna make for the mac and cheese. All right, can you set the timer for seven minutes? And then we'll drain it and then mix it with all this stuff that we're making. Uh, I need um, something to pour this in. Oh, I don't know. Here, here, I'll use this. So really what I wanted to do was not to put two tins of coconut milk in here. So I'm going to split this up into another cup. A second cup. Okay. Thank you. And if somebody is nice enough to top up my beer, I should say thank you. Cheers to that. All right, so for our healthy mac and cheese, I put in a ton of fresh garlic. So infuse that right into the back end of it and it gives it super flavor without them really knowing what is happening. So I'll put two in each container. <sighs> um, so like I said, secret ingredient is butternut squash that I blend into the background of macaroni and cheese. Oh, I should have been over this way, shouldn't I? Oh, my head popped. That and that. And sometimes it's so frozen that it doesn't blend so well. Uh, now I still put in salt, just not too much of it, because uh, the cheese is salty enough. And but the squash makes it very flat, and so does the macaroni. So I just put a little bit in, and I don't spice it up much because I want it to taste like macaroni and cheese. Nothing fancy. Nothing to look at here, just to eat it, love it, get in India, and have a good time. Ooh, fish. Yeah. You just stir that around. Yeah. Okay, uh, oh yeah, okay, so we're ready to go. Sorry about the noise, it is, it is noisy. I don't know how to save you from it. Okay, just noisy, plug your ears. Ugh. Oh my god. You gotta find the one that's sticky and just push down on that one. <laughs> Can I help you with that? Yes. That's the sticky one. Just to let go for a second. Oh. <laughs> if something gets. Oh. If something overflows on your neutral. Okay, sorry. There's one, so this is butternut squash, coconut, a tin of coconut milk, and two cloves of garlic, and a little bit of salt. That's it. Oh yeah, I need my top thing. Oh yeah, I was, was going to say, if you spill something on your Nutribullet and it gets down into those little crooks that make the machine happen, it's not good. As you just saw, this could be the second demo on... Exactly. You don't need to put the lids on when you're in. And it's full of coconut milk on the bottom. I can't even like yeah, get a grip on it. <laughs> Sorry about the noise.
Actually, it's not done. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, so if you're just tuning in, here's the magic ingredient that I am putting into the back end of macaroni and cheese for the nieces and nephews. Oh, uh, I think I'm actually going to put this whole bag in it, so sorry about the noise. Can I get that big bowl in? Sure Down there. And then we'll just mix everything in that. So as we start to do this stuff, then we'll just start to chuck it all in one big bowl. Hi, Verna. Okay. So big bowl. We're not going to mix all this stuff in there. So this basically looks like a butternut squash smoothie. It's pretty cool. I should be... Oh, I should have the... Oh, I was going to say I should have the camera on the other side because I'm... Handed. Why was I doing that? I should know my angles. <laughs> uh, Alright. So, don't want to waste any. It smells good. Okay. So, like I said, Nutribullet. Blend, blend. Uh, these are the snack peas. Can you put those in the fridge? Stuff. And the ranch. Just keep the veggies close together. Uh, okay, and then we have our other mixture of one tin of coconut milk and some blended squash. So I use the frozen stuff. I actually did buy a fresh one today, but I was like, this takes so long to do that it may cut into my nap time before the sleepover. So I forgot that I had already bought these that are already cut up and probably fresher than the fresh one. Okay, so I must blend one more time. Actually two more times. I gotta get a cloth. And more frozen butternut squash. Ugh, best man. Yeah, right. Can you help me? It's okay. It just gets the ice down in it. Okay, now we have like full up tough smoothie, so not enough liquid, but that's all right. Then we dump it in our big bowl. As long as it's blended enough, that's all I care about. So spaghetti, no, what is it? Butternut squash, not spaghetti squash, but I'm sure any kind of squash you can inject into here. So like I said, I picked an orange vegetable because it would look like cheese. And in general, I actually prefer not to use orange cheese because did you know that the orange in cheese is only from food coloring? <laughs> so cheese is actually supposed to be white. So I buy anything as close to white, like old and even matzah if I had to, but old cheese, better. Okay, we have our mixture. Let's get the stuff out of the top. So yeah, I will uh, brag once again in case you missed it. <laughs> it is uh, that my nephew Drew, who loves macaroni and cheese when he was here last time, he said I was in the top three of the best macaroni and cheeses he's ever had. I figured that wasn't the time to tell him. It was injected with delicious, nutritious butternut squash. Oh yeah, and the people who beat me out in the top three were his grandmothers, so I can't compete with that. I'll take that as a big win. It 
So if I was making this for adults, I may also include um, things like chopped up tomatoes. I would also include, I'd maybe make it a curry flavor. I would, what else would I do? Onions. You could put in like, oh yeah, fried onions. Mm. Uh, ham, you could put in, uh, if you knew your kids would eat uh, like chicken fingers chopped up in it. I mean, that's not the healthy option, but it would be a good option. I think there's a big chunk of, is that butternut squash in there? Oh yeah, it all just blend up. Yeah, I'm not sure that worked either. Because if they know there's butternut squash in here, they may not eat it. Oh my god, that's cold. I'll just chop them up smaller. At least I know they'll never stare up to death here. Oh. Okay, oh, <laughs> mixture done. Now we will take the oh, butter. We will that's just put butter in here already. So hmm. So mix it up. Did you put butter in that one? Okay. So like I said, we use elbow macaroni so that it looks like macaroni and cheese. Da -da 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 -da. Um, okay, next. Uh, that's it, I think. That's all I need. Okay. Uh, so macaroni did it in two separate pots because I used two packages. You can rinse those out if you want. And the neutral is here too. Two pots of it. Elbow rice pasta. Uh, oh well, we'll just stick it. In. Okay. All this is going into one dish. Dun, dun, dun. Then, of course, no macaroni and cheese is complete without it. I buy, of course, you can get like all kinds of brands and, you know, if I could get a full bag of organic free range nacho cheese, I would definitely buy it. Anyhow, this is my go-to for this. It's a 900 gram bag. So we mix this in to the middle. Make sure that we save enough so that the top is super cheesy. Because you know what it's like when you get that good crust on the top? You're like, yes. Okay, and some more secret ingredients. Flaxseed. Don't tell them. And the thing is, they don't like little speckles of stuff in there. Uh, the carb count in the rice pasta. That's a good question. Uh, I don't know. Did we just throw out that package of the rice pasta? I also put in hemp hearts, amazing um, protein and good stuff. But I don't put in too many so that they don't spot them and go, hey, you're trying to sneak something healthy into my mac and cheese. Carbs, 14%. Carbs. Um... Total carbohydrates, 43 grams. Dietary fiber, two grams, no sugar. So yeah, 43 grams. Does that answer your question? Okay, hemp hearts, good to inject into anything, especially when kids don't notice it. So because these have a little fleck in them, I'll just put it on the Hemp hearts. And big spoon and mix. So basically I have a butternut squash uh, smoothie. 
Okay, so I'll recap in case you just joined in. Um, this is a mac and cheese, and it consists of two bags of rice macaroni elbows already pre-cooked to El Dante and separately I blended two cans of light coconut milk organic if possible you know everything if possible uh, I blended it with fresh garlic a little bit of salt frozen butternut squash and then I'm mixing it with nacho cheese and hemp hearts and flax and butternut squash, right? So we get this lovely mixture. But uh, then I'm gonna move this out of the way. Hey, best man, yeah. will you chop up that butternut squash sure. right there? Not the not the broccoli. Okay, so I take a I don't know what this is. 10, 10 by 12 inch pan. Might as well make a shit ton of it while you're at it, right? Uh, and this is the latest thing I found, so I would have normally just greased it with coconut oil, but we found this non-cook coconut oil spray. Obviously, probably contains some polypropyl something. But it's very handy and when you're in a hurry and you need to have a nap before your nieces and nephews get here sometimes you gotta okay so in our pan oh oh no we've got action and if you find the nozzle um gums up on you just put it under hot water and it should free itself best man can you just do that so I can throw it in? Oh, sure. Thanks. All right, coconut oil. One cut up, is that it? Yeah, like just go. Chop, 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 chop. Okay. Thanks. And then we're going to throw it back in. So I also coconut oil the edge or the ridge, ledge, the lip. Because sometimes it'll always go over and then just is a mess. All right, uh, wash my hands. And those two pots on the stove there are long wall. Okay. Got your scoop? Chef scoop? Nope. This. Oh, I thought you were pointing at that. Nope. I'm just moving it away. Oh, very good. Okay. This cooking class is brought to you by Sapporo Beer. Mmm. Just waiting for last bit of ingredients. Yeah. And also while they're here, despite it being New Year's Eve, having a beer doesn't really happen. So I have the beer before my nap. Before the sleepover. Okay, thanks. So the big pieces that were left in there now are chopped and then we can pour them in. So we take now this big mixture of goodness, like I said, infused with butternut squash and also, like I said, if I was making this for adults, I would add tomatoes, I would add any flavor like curry or basil or you could go a savory root. Um, oh yeah, fried onions. You could put broccoli in it. You could put Brussels sprouts in it if you're feeling very adultly adventurous. I wouldn't, but... And I even halfway like Brussels sprouts. Chicken fingers. Okay, so in we go. Our mixture. <laughs> wow, that's a lot of mac and cheese. But it's worth it. And our nephew Drew has a nice big appetite. He's now a hockey player and he eats like a 
like a growing boy, so I always make sure I have lots ready to roll. And because they expend so much energy while they're here that I see why they are hungry a lot. Okay, in we go. Da, da, da. Look at that, hemp hearts all hidden. Butternut squash all hidden. Flaxseed hidden. Even coconut milk hidden. Um, okay, so for the grand finale, so we go for our bag of cheese because I did not want to mix it all up, or sorry, shred it all up. And despite me wanting healthy, you have to have the good taste, so I put a lot of cheese on top so that you really get that feeling like this is one cheesy dish. You don't, you don't, yeah, right. You don't want to skimp out on, on like the very important ingredients. Okay, smooth that out. Okay, and for the final finale, the final finale, don't judge, panko. Let's crisp this shit up, hey? All right. So on top of the shredded cheese, can I have the cloth again, please? I'm still dealing with spilled coconut milk. You know they say don't cry over spilled milk, but spilled coconut milk? It's an issue. This is sticky. Okay, thanks. Coming back, Ida. Okay, like I said, so to top off the mac and cheese, easy panko. And it gives it that crispy, crunchy top, and then every child is like, oh my god, it's so good. And then I sit back and go, yes, my job is done. And then we wrestle and play Legos and Nerf and this and this and karaoke <laughs> and go down to my studio and paint. <laughs> okay, I think that is, oh my gosh, there's hardly any left. Okay. Panko, making great mac and cheese since Actually, I don't know when. When did panko ever show up? All of a sudden, everybody was talking about it. I picked the one, I found the one in the box it is the one with the least amount of ingredients. The one in uh, some of the other rounder cardboard containers seem to have more ingredients. I just went for less ingredients. Whatever that means, I don't know. Okay, and oh my god, we have mac and cheese so the other thing i do in order to just get everything rolling i pre-cook this for probably maybe a half an hour and just get it like cooked cooked all the way through and then i just leave it on the stove top and then as i know they're coming i just start the oven at 350 and put it in for about 20 minutes and it just warms up again it's already like fairly crispy i'll maybe even broil it on the top if i find it's just not brown enough and i don't want to cook the shit out of it uh so yeah i'll pre-cook it so i'll cook it now maybe while i'm having my nap and then when they get here it's just ready to roll and i will have already put out the um broccoli the broccoli and baby carrots with the ranch dip so like i said okay so here's here's the rollout so i can't even tell how long i've been doing this but so i'll start the evening when they get here on the coffee table i have carrots baby carrots and broccoli with ranch dip and they just eat it all up and then shortly after that, after we play and do what we do, then they'll be like, hey, what are we having for supper? And then the macaroni and cheese will be already out of the oven for the second time and nice and 
semi cooled off so that they don't burn their mouths because sometimes they'll just fire it in anyways uh, and then we have mac and cheese and then maybe later on we'll pull out like popcorn and chips and stuff like that uh, and then in the morning after our sleepover they get up very early because we all sleep in the living room in our sleeping bags and they get up early so then we just lay out a big bowl of grapes for them with these little sticky things oh i should show you the other thing that is really hilarious that i just thought of it then um what they love is we open up a couple of cans of chickpeas i'm not even sure how this happened and I found these little dishes because presentation is everything. And isn't it fun when you get to eat out of things you wouldn't normally eat out of? So I bought these little dishes that are for like party favors or something. I already wrote their name on it. Ooh. Sorry. Wrote their names on it and they come with this with little tiny spoons. So fill these up with plain old chickpeas out of a can give them their little spoons and they love it they just like one at a time they eat them so I kind of throw those out as snacks too this wasn't even my, my idea really my little nephew Ty kind of came up with it because I had chickpeas out and he said oh can I try one of them I said sure and I gave him like a little spoon to eat them with next thing they all wanted it so we do those as well with little tiny spoons chickpeas Nothing fancy. I'm not sure you could talk any other kid into it. It's only because it was, I think, his idea that it flew. Anyhow, that's the other thing we do. So I could also use this as a snack type of idea. And in the morning, like I said, uh, we'll serve out the big bowl of grapes already cleaned, uh, already destemmed with little tiny stabber things that look like this. Yep and they sit around and they eat with those then i will make them parfaits which i will blend yogurt with bananas and then make these layers in clear plastic wine glasses and so it'll be the layer of yogurt a layer of chocolate pudding i know it's like give and take on the healthy thing but really we're going for fun it's new year's eve it's a sleepover so the layer of yogurt layer of chocolate uh pudding you know i'm sure you can find all kinds of qualities of chocolate pudding uh i'll also put in a layer of applesauce and then the layer of yogurt and then repeat and even like crumble in some chocolate chip cookies or whatever you wanted to throw in there you could do any kind of granola that type of thing and in the wine glasses then it looks like this cool little trifle and we give them fancy little spoons and they're all happy and then maybe we'll scramble some eggs and stuff like that. And the other thing I just keep in the fridge is uh, like a watermelon lemonade, as well as an apple something juice so that they can serve themselves. And uh, also we have cheese strings in there that they can just help themselves to. And that seems to just sort of keep them not so jonesing for junk. So I think that may be it. Yeah, mac and cheese with butternut squash. It's the bomb and it tastes so good. So uh, yeah, that's it. That's the rollout for the food for the nieces and nephews sleepover. I think I've told you everything, maybe more than you ever needed to know, but there it is, you know. Okay, I hope you guys have a wonderful New Year's Eve. Um, thanks for hanging out. If you have any questions, just post them below. I may not get to answer them tonight because now I have to go for a nap. Remember, key to having kids over for a sleepover is the pre-nap and prep of food because they can eat and you can spend your whole time prepping food, but it's not my bag. I wanna be playing, playing hard, not cooking all the time. So all this prep work really helps me stay in the action. So I'm not just in the kitchen. Definitely not where I want to be. Okay, so like I said, have a great night and uh, make good decisions and have fun. And I will see you in the new year. Okay, bye.